In this lecture, we'll be discussing nutrition. Uh, so with nutrition, we'll be discussing uh, how the body takes and uses those food sources and what they'll use those food sources for. Uh, so for example, growth and repair of tissue. Uh, and we'll be discussing the five uh, processes, the intake, digestion, absorption, metabolism, and elimination. We'll be talking about essential nutrition, which is needed for normal function. And we'll also be talking about uh, non-essential nutrients, uh, which can be synthesized from, the, from uh, uh, your, your other compounds that your body takes in. Uh, for, for example, amino acids we'll be discussing. Seven nutrients, proteins, fatty acids, so you may hear this referred to as lipids or fats. So we're talking about cholesterol, uh, carbohydrates, fiber, vitamins, minerals, and water. We'll be focusing quite a bit of time on, on the vitamins and minerals in this particular lecture. The fatty acids we'll be discussing when we talk about cholesterol. Macronutrients, uh, you need a very large amount, so think, think large. So you need a lot of, the, of, of this, uh, and these are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and again, you need these in, in large qu uh, qualities, and, and, and of course, water is very important as well. I'm talking about the amino acids, and nine of the twenty amino acids are are essential. Uh, that is very important to to know. Storage of carbohydrates, glucose, which is a sugar, and this can be stored in the liver and the muscles as a glycogen. Now, this will be discussed in, in a lot more detail when we talk about diabetes, but this is very important to, to make note now. Uh, also, uh, excess amounts of carbohydrates are stored in the body as adipose tissue or fat tissue. So. So we need carbohydrates, but if we take in too many carbohydrates, then we just start adding more and more of these carbohydrates in, in storage. So this could, can potentially become a problem. Uh, micronutrients, these is what we need in a very small amount. Small quantities is all, all we need of, of this. So when you see this, think small, like, like microbiology. Uh, with vitamins, there's two types of classifications. There's going to be water soluble and fat soluble. So water soluble vitamins uh, you take in and what your body does not need you just urinate out. Fat soluble vitamins are actually stored in the adipose tissue or the, or the fat tissue. So there is a potential to overdose on fat soluble vitamins. So it, it's, uh, it's very very important. Um, to monitor the KADE of your fat soluble vitamins because again there's potential of overdose uh, and the water soluble vitamins the B and C vitamins which the water soluble vitamins are basically anything besides KADE uh, and, and your body just uses what it needs to and then urinates the rest out. Uh, this is located in your book uh, table um, 8-1 uh, I will not be discussing this particular table. Uh, we'll discuss it out of the book. And again, um, 8 8 1. Um, this part of the table is discussed here. So, talking about thiamine, which is vitamin B1, this is a very important vitamin that you'll need to know. Um, it's important in carbohydrate and metabolic processes. Deficiency can lead to a condition called beriberi. -beri. Uh, which is a very serious condition. Um, chronic alcoholics will develop this. Um, also, uh, I guess beriberi is the is the scientific name. You also may hear the non-scientific name referred to as wet brain. 
that's WET brain, wet brain. And this can be very, very serious. Uh, and this, this is a deficiency in, in thiamine, uh, which is again vitamin B1. Vitamin B3, referred to as niacin, uh, and this can can help lower uh, cholesterol. So you'll see niacin used quite a bit. This is available over the counter and prescription strength. Uh, the pres prescription strength is is uh, higher than the over the counter strengths. Uh, sources: uh, liver, uh, yeast product, peanuts, whole grain cereals, and fish. Uh, but again, we're we're using niacin uh, or vitamin B3 to help uh, lower cholesterol. And a continuation of niacin. Um, we haven't discussed cholesterol yet, but what we want is low levels of LDL and high levels of HDL. So LDL is your bad cholesterol, and your HDL is your good cholesterol. And niacin helps with that. Um, so often if you see patients that have low HDL, um, niacin is, is a good drug to put the patient on because it will help increase your HDL and lower the LDL. Uh, folate, or also known as folic acid, um, comes from um, dark greens, leafy vegetables, and this is very, very, very important. Um, it's essential to he hemoglobin formation, which we'll talk about uh, a little later in this particular lecture, and uh, amino acid synthesis. So this is a very, very important one. I'll start on this particular slide. Um, if you do not have enough of folate, this potentially can lead to um, certain anemias, uh, and they also want to increase uh, folic acid, which is recommended in pregnancy to prevent uh, spinal bifida. And you will see uh, a lot of patients on folic acid. Um, it, it is used for a lot of a lot of different uh, uh, metabolic processes. And the, the over-the-counter strength, I believe, is 400 micrograms, and the prescription strength is 1 milligram. Um, so you'll see quite a few patients on, on fol folic acid or folate. Vitamin B12, again, uh, so this is sources, um, fish, dairy, um, meats, eggs, etc. Uh, what we, it promotes normal cell function. Uh, especially with blood formation, and we'll be discussing that a little later in this particular lecture, and nerve cell function. Um, if, and if you do not have the B12, they can lead to, to anemia. And you'll see this in, in elderly patients um, quite a bit. The vitamin C, which uh, again is, is a, um, a water-soluble vitamin. It, it is used for wound healing, tissue repair, resistant infection. So you'll see um, patients um, uh, who want to prevent um, uh, the common cold, etc., especially around, around cold and flu season, taking extra vitamin C. Also, some of the um, airborne and um, Prevention of, um, of of the sicknesses. I only one I can recall off the top of my head is airborne. Uh, I think there's like a, a vitamin C uh, power pack or something that is sold at, for uh, for patients who are experiencing the cold. And all this is just uh, a high concentration of vitamin C. Um, also helps with the iron bioavailability. So you'll see vitamin C and iron prescribed together in calcium absorption. It's, it is an antioxidant, so it uh, may help reduce cancer risk as well. Uh, vitamin C also protects against cataracts, so that's obviously going to be important. Now we're talking about vitamin A, so now we're talking about the fat-soluble vitamins. Uh, sources, uh, the fish oil, butter, eggs, and all milk contains fortified or is fortified with vitamin A, so milk has extra vitamin A. Um, and carotene is converted to vitamin A in the body. Uh, it 
also aids in, in the tissue uh, maintenance, uh, skeletal and soft tissue growth, and protein synthesis and vision. And actually, President uh, Jimmy Carter did a lot with uh, vitamin A in the uh, 90s, 2000s um, with, uh, with vitamin A. Uh, mild fissures may cause night blindness and uh, again toxicity because this is a fat solid vitamin that's marked with hair loss, jaundice, joint pain, liver injury. So it is very serious. Um, vitamin A deficiency is number one cause of blindness in, uh, in children worldwide. This is the uh, comment about the Jimmy Carter. Sources, if you green vegetables, AIDS and blood clotting, uh, and it also is the antidote for Coumadin. And we'll discuss antidotes uh, a few more lectures down, uh, but I will point this out now because uh, you may see this particular point again. But uh, the antidote for Coumadin is vitamin K. It's very important not to mix vitamin K with potassium. So we're talking about a vitamin and we're talking about a mineral. So very, very important not to confuse those. Students like to confuse those. So, so keep that in mind. Um, mineral and uh, vitamins. Um, insufficient vitamin D intake will hinder the reuptake of calcium. And vitamin D helps the body absorb the calcium. So uh, we get vitamin D from lots of sources. Uh, the sunlight is probably the number one source of, of where we get vitamin D. So what happens is we take in the calcium and then the vitamin D will help the bones absorb the calcium. Uh, vitamin C, and then uh, the next note here with vitamin C can increase iron absorption as much as 30%. So uh, there's a couple of commercially available products with both iron and vitamin C. And I will finish with lecture two uh, of this lecture.